So this is actually a simplified workflow, but it's not a problem, you know, we could create very quickly something new. So I'm going to delete that transition. And yeah, it's just, it's just for presentation purpose. So I'm going to do non-simplify. So we're going to basically call it as we want. So to do, ah, this Dolly is going to be number two. So this one I'm also going to delete. And this one I'm also going to delete. So we're not going to go through everything, but from to do to in progress. So please remember like the name of the status is the most important, uh, sorry, the transition in the name of the status is not that important. And we're going to go to add. So obviously this uh, modification is a bit idiotic because uh, we only can go from to do to in progress, but that's cool. This is just for the presentation sake. And I'm going to also create from in progress to done and click done done. All right, now I'm going to publish it. And let's go back to the project. All right, so our workflow is a bit modified. So we smoothly just like basically converted it from simplify to non simplify. So let's go back to backlog. And let's go to active sprints. So right now, as you can clearly see, I cannot move this issue directly to done. Why? Obviously, because we modified a little bit, I modify basically the workflow. Yeah, so we can only transition from to do to in progress. And obviously, this is one way road, so I cannot uh, roll it back. Yeah, so if, for instance, I'm going to move it to in progress, I can't move it back to to do, but that's okay. You know, I don't really worry about this, it's just for the presentation sake. So, okay. So let's see, like the, in, in, my, in my opinion, in my opinion, the most powerful functionality of the script runner. Yeah. So it's still, you can't actually see anything in this actually view. Why? Because it is related to the workflow. So let's go back to workflow. Let's go back to the settings. I'm going to go to workflow. Of course, in this project, only one workflow is absolutely fine. And let's go back to workflow. And now let's do something. Let's change something in a transition, because please do not forget that the uh, script render is the post functions or conditions or validations. You can only apply to the transition, never to statuses. OK, so what we've got here, let's start from post function, because this is actually like the most uh, important for me. So as you can see, we don't have actually anything right here. We've got this five scripts, uh, five actually five, five steps by default. So now let's add and let's show, let's reveal the script runner. So we're going to add the post function. And there you go, you know, I've, as I told you, I've got a little bit more plugins, so you're not going to see the JSU. Maybe I'm going to record the video about JSU too. But in this case, we're going to use, of course, our script runner post function. So you're going to highlight, you're going to highlight this and, and just select, you know, you need uh, script post functions and add, just add, just hit the add button. And look at this, we've got another collection of like a pre, like a pre-configured templates, you know, and of course, you know, if you, if you don't like it, you can create your very, very own one. So you, everything that you can see right here can be, of course, uh, recreated during a pure simple you know groovy programming all right so you know because this video already is too long maybe we're gonna create the subtask yeah why not you know we can create a subtask we can create or link the issue you know that is also very very popular but let's create a subtask so what's going to happen now we can also add the condition and which i'm going to talk and additional actually examples are over here. So note, you can actually put something, you know, demo. Uh, it's good to know, have a note. And look at this now, why conditions are so great? Because maybe, maybe you just want to execute this transition for a single issue type. For a single issue type is actually very, very simple to do. <laughs> for example, if you know how to do it, if you select that 
specific issue type and that is going to be actually from Groovy. So still cool because you don't really need to know almost anything about Groovy in this case. Yeah, so look at this, what's going to happen if I hit the issue type and it's saying the issue type name, uh, obviously that means is um, it's a logic, yes. So it will, so what does it mean? That condition will be executed if that actually issue type is equal to back. However, obviously, you know, from programming, this is not why it's double double equal because it's a logic, yeah? So it's gonna provide true or false. So in this case, if it's gonna be true, and the rest of the script will be executed. So that's why you probably know how to remove it, how to actually replace it for uh, uh, another issue type. It could be story, it could be epic, could be whatever. But back, you know, we're gonna stay as it is, or maybe you know, we're not gonna do anything. If you do not put anything absolutely empty, it's gonna execute for every single issue type. And look at this, now we're gonna say, uh, issue target type is gonna be subtasks. Subtask summary, we can say something like sub demo, and you can also copy uh, fields. This is very cool, you know. This is actually one of the order, one of the most important, to be honest, because we can copy like due date, reporter, or absolutely any any custom fields. Yes, yeah? so any custom fields. If you've got SLA, if you've got uh, like me, I've got some some custom fields. Absolutely no problem. And also you can you can copy as the user, but we're not going to do it at all. And you can also put some 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 additional additional groovy, uh, for instance, like you know, set a custom field. You can actually set some custom field if you if using or show a pop up, for instance, like this one is actually pretty much cool. And subtask action is gonna be, uh, I think it's gonna be none. That's all right. So let's let's test it. Yeah. So I'm gonna update it. And of course, do not forget, that's like my uh, very common issue, don't forget to publish it. Yeah, so, you, so you're not going to, you're not going to see any effect until you're going to publish the changes. So you publish the changes and obviously our transition is only over here. Yeah? So if you want to duplicate it, you, unfortunately you have to do it manually. All right. I think we're, 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 we're good with that. Let's test it. Let's test it. What's going to happen? So I'm going to go back to backlog. All right, so now let's test it for that story. Basically, as you can see, I am in uh, in to do. So in this status, so what's going to happen now if I hit in progress? Obviously, it's going to work exactly same way. So you don't have to. I'm just going. I'm just. I'm just using. Basically, I just hit the button, but it's going to work exactly same from the board. So you can do it. You can move the tick. You can move that issue manually, or you can just just press the button like me. So, but why I want to just press the button because you're gonna see some changes happening. So okay, let's hit in progress. And there you are. And as you can see, that our pop up uh, three subtasks created. Yes. So something's happening. Can you see sub demo? We've got our uh, our script been executed. So let's have a look, you know, I'm going to go to the, go to that issue. And as you can clearly see, it is related to our issue. The stuff been copy, basically due date been copy, whatever been, been copy, whatever you really want. And reporter also is duplicated. Why well, actually I'm, um, well, why I'm actually talking about this reporter, because uh, maybe you've got a problem like me, maybe, uh, you know, your team, you know, I'm, I'm the super admin, but maybe script runner is going to, is going to work, um, in a, in a production environment. And some people maybe do not have a uh, right to create an issue. And this is actually the case in, in my, in my, um, well, in my team, we've got few actually people which they don't have rights to create an, an issue. And yes, it is a little bit problem in the script runner because script runner is using the permission uh, inherit from the user which is using and if that user is not going to have a permission to create issues the script runner execution will fail so you have to so this so there is a there is a very really clever way to to to, to overcome it uh, well, maybe I'm not going to show you this time because it's already a little bit too long. But yes, it is a very, very clever and very simple way to uh, overcome this problem. So, however, you know, we've got our our issue is uh, clearly, clearly, clearly is linked. Yeah, 
I'm going to close it to our SD ASDD 27. That is the number. And yeah, and it's actually somehow SSD one related to this issue. Absolutely fine. So now let's have a look, you know, closer. Because if we go back to workflows, we also gonna see a log. You know, if for instance script failed or something like this, you're gonna see this. So again, if we go to script runner, I've be, I've been rehearsing a few times, so I've I've tested that script uh, a few times before. So we're not gonna see just one execution. There's gonna be a few. So let's go post function. And as you can see, because I've been rehearsing, there was no problem being executed three times. Everything is green. So. Obviously, this is great, also great functionality because if something's wrong, maybe your script is not working, maybe there is a, you know, <laughs> there is a spelling or any mistake, it can fail. And if it fails, obviously, you're going to see this stuff and it's also providing the report. So, obviously, this was very, very, very quick tutorial about the script runner because as all, I only showed you one usage, it's a post function, and even that post functions, there is like hundreds, but on top of it, we've got validators and we've got conditions. So if you, of course, want to know how to uh, use conditions validator, let me know in the comments. Let me know what do you think. And I hope that video was not very long. I've decided to split it on two parts, like the demo and screw. And the next one I am going to record about next video is going to be dedicated to the data plane which is amazing absolutely amazing reporting tool and the f and the third <laughs> number four uh, dedicated to portfolio all right thank you very much please subscribe to my channel and if you can visit my new website with my online courses which is mjerdega.com uh, i've got few new courses because people have been asking for them i'm trying to keep Add a few more. So please, if you can visit my website, and this is where you're gonna find uh, more about my trainings, where you can even sign up, you know, for that free training. So thank you very much. Please leave, of course, the comments and uh, let me know what do you think. If you've got any questions, fire it up also on our Facebook group. Thank you for watching.